Hi, I'm Pete Lesher, Chief Curator for the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, and welcome to A Chesapeake Treasure. Today, I'm talking about one of the boats in our collection, one of the most modest boats in our collection, which is this push boat uh, from the Skipjack EC Collier, which is in our oystering building, attached, as it were, to the stern of the Skipjack EC Collier. Push boats like this, and this one was the push boat that was worked for years with the, the Skipjack EC Collier, pushing it to and from the oyster bars uh, day in and day out through the oyster season. Uh, we don't know who built this one or precisely when. That's actually pretty typical for push boats, uh, that we don't know who built them. Um, this one, push boats had their origin in the early 20th century. Every sailing vessel would have had uh, a yawl boat, that is uh, a boat hung in davits over the stern, uh, suspended from here, and when they needed to row ashore or maybe even to row the larger boat, uh, when the wind had completely died, uh, they lowered this boat into the water and this became their, their, their boat for that, for that use. In the early 20th century, when, when small marine gasoline engines became available, they started dropping them in these yawl boats and in the oyster fleet, uh, they would push the boat in and out of harbor with this, with this small motor, hence the name push boat, uh, which came about in the 20th century. Um, and in most cases, it was uh, arranged like this one where the, the skipjack has a rudder mounted in the center and there's a chock so that it doesn't damage the stern of the boat where it noses up against the boat the, uh, the bow is brought up out of the water so it can be cinched tight. So it's, uh, when we shift it into reverse or something like that, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to stray too far. The other, the other falls are, are left sort of slack so that the boat can be maneuvered back and forth, sort of like an outboard motor, which would be turned one way or the other to, to help steer uh, a, a small boat. Uh, powered in that way. In this case, the outboard motor is not an outboard motor, it's an inboard motor in its own little boat. We have four of these push boats in our collection. Uh, one that was built for the, uh, for the Edna Lockwood, one that was built for the Skipjack Rosie Parks, one that was built for the Skipjack Stanley Norman and that hangs in the, uh, the ceiling of our Van Lennep Auditorium, and then this one that came uh, from, the, from the EC Collier. When E.C. Collier was laid up, Captain Jack Larimore passed away in 1983. The E.C. Collier was laid up, uh, and the push boat uh, was, uh, was then used by Captain Wade Murphy. When E.C. Collier was ultimately donated to the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, she came without a push boat, but Wade Murphy, uh, who had this boat then, uh, turned around and, and gave the original push boat to the museum so that we could have the full set. Push boats, uh, would have been only used to get the boat in and out to the dredging grounds. Uh, Maryland law required that dredging be done under sail. That changed in 1967 when Maryland allowed the push boats to be used while oyster dredging on Mondays and Tuesdays. And in the 1990s, that was further revised that they were, the oystermen were allowed to use the push boats for oyster dredging on any two days of the week. And that's the way the law remains to this day. Uh, watermen can use these push boats on their skipjacks while oyster dredging any two days of the week. And for many of the skipjacks, it is just those days that they work. Sail dredging being much less efficient, they choose not to use that. But this, this push boat has been retired to the, to the museum collection and uh, rests here permanently behind the EC Collier. Thank you for joining me today for A Chesapeake Treasure.